Folks, welcome back to the channel. Continuing on with my Exolite Pro Saga. Um, if you didn't catch my last video, go ahead and uh, check it out right here. It's just an initial overview of the radio, uh, minus a few little things that I didn't really feel like covering, like the uh, spectrum analyzer and the RF power meter. Um, I'll get to those when I learn more about them. But as of right now, I don't have any receivers that actually work with this radio, which is it's a major bummer. Um, I was hoping that my, uh, my R9M light module would work, but currently the firmware inside this radio does not work with any external modules. There are plans for it to work. It's just, you know, I, I'll be honest, this thing came out way earlier than it should have, and things aren't quite ready. But uh, also my my RXSR modules and my XM Plus modules, they don't, <clears throat> they don't work with this. So uh, I went ahead and bought one of the module, the receivers that do work with this because this only does the access protocol. It's not backwards compatible, or at least not as of yet. And I'd say that uh, with no intentions of it being backwards compatible, but I'm just saying it does not accept the uh, ACC ST protocol, only the access. So one of the receiver modules that actually works with access is this one. This is the uh, FreeSky uh, RX4R. Uh, when, it, when you get it out of the package, it doesn't actually speak in access protocol. It uses the, the old ACCST, but this one does have the ability to have the firmware updated on it to access. Uh, FRSky has confirmed that they are still working on getting older receivers, uh, as in the RXSR, the XM Plus, things like that, and the R9 to work with access, but that firmware is not out yet. So here is the RX4R module, sorry, RX4 receiver here. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Uh, this one comes with the pins pre-installed in it. <clears throat> and just for comparison uh, sakes, uh, here is what a R9MM receiver looks like, <laughs> you know, comparing the size of it. As you can see, this is a whole other beast as far as size. This is pretty stinking big. So I'm not going to put it in uh, any of my normal models and I'm not going to use this long term. I'm probably just going to put it in something where it's, well, let's face it, something that's going to be convenient to mount this in because, well, something this size, I mean, in a wing, that's, that, that's about the only thing I could think of to put this in. But anyways, we're gonna go through the process of how to flash the access firmware to the RX4R so we can use our new X-Lite Pro. Uh, and this also applies to the X-Lite S. The first generation X-Lites, no problems. Those work fine with the old stuff. So let's, uh, let's get this guy flashed up. Okay, so to flash this, it's gonna be a lot like the older or any other uh, FR Sky receiver. Uh, they do give you this connector here, and from left to right, we're going to go ground, power, and that's your smart port wire. And conveniently enough, they gave me this wire here that has uh, everything pretty much broken out on it. So we're going to connect this to here, and we're going to use this pin header here, or the servo cable. So we got ground, power, and smart port. So through this cable, we're going to connect it to our transmitter through the uh, external smart port connector on the underside. But first we have to get the firmware onto our radio and I'll show you how to do that right now. Let's go over to the computer. Okay. First thing we gotta do is go to free Sky's website. And once we're here, go ahead and click on download. And we're going to scroll down to receivers, find our receiver. So this is for the RX4R, and it should be the same for the GX, the RX6, um, you know, all the, the receivers that are capable of this. So I have the RX4R. Click that, find our access firmware, and we're going to go ahead and hit download. And once that's downloaded, let's go ahead and open it up. And there's our firmware. Next, go ahead and start up our X-Lite Pro. Welcome to 
to OpenTX. Connect our USB port to it. And it should ask me if I want to use joystick or USB storage mode. We're going to select USB storage mode. If it doesn't ask you to do that, you're going to have to go into the menu. Now that first page, scroll towards the bottom, and it will ask you about USB and what you want to do with it. So here's the SD card contents of my XLite Pro. And just the way I keep track of things, I'm going to go to firmware, and I'm going to put the access firmware in that folder. And that is that. We can go ahead and disconnect our radio and move away from the computer. Let's head back over to the bench. Okay, back to the bench here. Let's go ahead and fire up our X-Lite Pro. Welcome to OpenTX. And we're going to go ahead and connect our cable from our RX4R, this one here on the left, to the port on the underside of our XLite Pro. And the pinout on the underside of our XLite should be smart port, power, and ground. Make sure you have these right. Uh, they should have come pretty much set up properly when you got this thing, but just in case they're not, uh, some of the, the FR Sky receivers don't, don't handle having reverse voltage very well, and they tend to die. All right, so we're going to go into our XLite. We're going to hold to the left. And then we're at radio setup page one. We want to get over to page two, which is our SD card contents. By the way, if you don't have an SD card in your radio, this isn't going to work. After all, where would you have saved the uh, firmware to? And we're going to find that folder that you saved your firmware to. For me, it's firmware. We're going to click down on the stick. We're going to go to our folder that has our RX4R access heart, uh, firmware. And we're going to we're going to go down to that folder. We're going to give it a click. We're going to come down to the file we're looking for, the FRK. We're going to long hold on it. And we're going to go to Flash S port. And you should see down here, our receiver is being flashed. And that's it. Flash is complete. And we can back out of here. And now we just need to install this in a model. Okay, so uh, I don't really have any quads I want to tear apart right now, but I have this one. It's kind of my, my test bench beater everyday quad, or every man's quad. And I'm going to hook up the RX4R like so. Um, this pin here that I took out, that was a... Uh, S bus in, we don't really need that. That's for uh, receiver redundancy. And this pin next to it, that's listed as AIN2. I don't know what that is and I don't need it. So we've got ground, power, smart port, and S bus. Again, we're still playing this inverted, not inverted BS from FR Sky. So, I'm going to use this on a uh, F7 because I know I can uh, do the inversion within the processor. I don't have to worry about uh, finding the, the inverted uh, smart port pad that's on the back of this. But this receiver does have a way to get the inverted smart port. If you're using an F4 that doesn't have a built-in telemetry pad, an inverter on a TX, or if you don't want to use smart... Uh, or if you don't want to use soft serial. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this up. And by the way, this receiver also came with another pigtail that has no uh, connector on it, just for doing a direct solder. So I'm go ahead and get this soldered up.
And that's that. That's all our connections that we need to make to our flight controller. Uh, obviously, your flight controller is probably going to be different, unless for some reason you're using the, this exact same flight controller, which I very much doubt. So we're going to go ahead and connect this bad boy up. And now we need to bind to it. All right, so now that we have everything connected, we're going to turn our radio on. Welcome to OpenTX. We're going to push to the right, hold to the right to get to our, our models. And we're going to find our model and we're going to push to the right to get to set up page two. I'm going to push up and we're going to get to our internal RF, this one here. We're going to make sure it's set to ISRM, that's internal serial receiver module, I believe. That's what it means. And we're going to change our channel range down to, um, change it down to one through eight. There we go. RX number one. And we're going to go down to reg for registration. We're going to select that. We're going to get our registration ID. And the next thing we need to do is we need to power up our receiver while holding the bind button like we traditionally would on all our older modules. So I'm going to go ahead and, or all our older receivers. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down on that bind button while I power on my receiver. And here we go. It's recognized my receiver as the RX4R. Come down to exit or enter and registration. Okay. Press enter again. So now we have successfully bound to this receiver. Next, we need to go down to receiver one and select bind. Power cycle receiver. And here we go. Select RX, RX 4R. There we go. So this receiver is registered to this module and bound there. And that's the binding process for this receiver to the new x -Lite Pro with the Access firmware. Let's go ahead and set this quad up in Betaflight and we'll give it a shot, see how it works. Okay, so we have Betaflight up and we have it connected. We go to ports. And we're going to make sure we have our port set up properly. For this one, I connected S port to TX4 right there. And I connected S bus in to UART2, like so. We'll go down to configuration and make sure we're still using a S bus protocol. We'll go down to a receiver tab and turn our radio on. Welcome to OpenTX. There we go. And there we go. It works straight away out of the box. All the channel mapping seems to be correct. I'll have to go through and map my switches. And as you can see right here, AUX12, this is going to be my RSSI. It's kind of the thing that FR Sky is doing lately is they're automatically routing RSSI to channel 16, which ends up in Betaflight being AUX12. They're considering this channel one, two, three, and four. And 16 minus four ends up being 12. So AUX12 is my RSSI. And that's it. That's how we get the access protocol onto one of the newer receivers. And that's it. And there we go. Uh, Pretty simple using the F7 processor uh, to connect and get full telemetry out of the RX4R with the access protocol connected to the FRSky X Lite Pro. And this should be the same for the X Lite Pro S model. Um, if you have an F4 processor that, or F4 flight controller that does not have an inverter on a TX pad, go ahead, take your little casing off, and follow the directions. It'll show you exactly where to find that inverted S port signal and go ahead and wire that up instead of this one here, this third pin, uh, because that is a uninverted S port. 
And uh, if, uh, if that's confusing, don't worry about it. F4 and pretty much everything else. Um, so your connections uh, are probably not gonna be the same as mine, but this is how it works for me. I finally have a receiver that can actually bind to the stinking radio and it seems like it works just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and button this whole mess up, get my antennas routed, and I'm gonna go fly it for a little while and uh, pay attention to my channel for the community comments. It's where I post a lot of little quick updates about this system, uh, if you're curious about more information. If you wanna know more about this, please, uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer questions about this. This radio, again, is not ready for prime time. It will work with certain receivers. It does not work with any external modules right now. I'm not saying it doesn't work with Crossfire. I'm saying it doesn't work with any external modules, even the R9M Lite. It will eventually support external modules. Uh, so we'll just have to wait for the firmware to get updated on this. Um, but anyways, that was a quick little overview on how to get this working. Um, the access protocol was super easy to put on there, super easy to set up. And uh, supposedly it should support automatic binding and it should do over the air firmware updates. But again, I can't confirm until there's an update to put on it. All right, guys, uh, that's enough for now. I'm gonna button this thing up and I'm gonna go fly. If you have any comments, questions, please put them in the box below and I'll catch you next time.